자, 2009년도 공식전 먼저 따져보도록 하죠. 네, 2009년 공식전 아, 저우전만 이제 아, 살펴보면 오히려 한상봉 선수가 저우전 승리. Yeah, the three commentators. I always forget whether it's Kingdom or Nara. Which one of them is does um, OGN? Which one of them does MVP? 합니다만은 승률은 조금 더 낮습니다. 70%에 승률을 보여주고 있습니다. 네. 자, 2009년도 공식전 전적을 비교해 봤을 때는 저우전만 따져 봤을 때 한상봉 선수 조금 우위고요. 자, 그런 가면은 김민아 선수의 선거를 가져오도록 하죠. 흠집이 안 나다가 잠깐 쉬었어요. 네, 김민아 선수는 정말 여기까지 오는 과정이 네. 너무나 화려하다고 밖에 표현할 길이 없습니다. 그렇죠. 이 4강에서 이재동 선수에게 한 경기를 진 것을 제외하면 단한 번의 패배도 이번 아발로 영화 적이 없습니다. 예. 저희 맨, 맨, 맨 마지막에는 <웃음> 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 So who else uh, casting? 어쨌든 대단한 기록을 지금 보여주고 있기 때문에 Me, you and Frank casting. 김민아 선수가 yeah. 하상호 선수를 상대로 3대0으로 okay. 이기게 되면 또 다른 기록이 나올 수 있기 때문에 확실히 So, we're off right now, right? 이런 예상도 좀 해볼 수가 있겠습니다. 그렇죠. 만약에 3대0 승리라면은 양들이 다 통틀어서 승률이 92.9%로 우승하는 겁니다. 네, 공식 데뷔전이 yeah. 2005년 12월이었습니다. 변영태 선수를 yeah, 대표로 Yeah, so live stream automatically yeah, records the bot. 첫 우승을 노리는 아, 좀 천천히 걸어온 이런 선수입니다. 데뷔한 지 얼마 안 돼서 진짜 주목받으면서 결승전 무대에 올라가서 아, 최고의 챔피언이 되는 이런 If anyone has the ability to yeah, split FLB, you can. Does anyone yeah, have any programs that can do that? 나가면서 지금 결승전 무대 I just usually convert, so. Yeah, just split FLBs. Well, if you convert, uh, you either lose a lot of quality or inflate the final size a lot. Anyway, they just brought up Quanra's stats for me a couple seconds ago. Same. Usually number one is Quanra's stats. I'm sure they're talking about how he came back from 2-0 down to Iris right now. <laughs> that series was great. Alright, we'll just go to the level back on. For thinking purposes, everyone just like shout now when they switch to comms. Yeah, there was, uh, he's still on my screen, but it's showing like some Korean wording, and I have no idea what it is. Yeah, my screen is uh, so, so much a shout when they go cut away from the screen or something like that. Okay, okay when there's a we are. when there's a switch from the screen, I'll say something. Now, just switch. Switch. Mm -hmm. A little bit off. So hopefully it's not as bad as it's been in the past. I've seen like 30 second delays, so I don't think it's going to be that bad. Yeah, that wasn't more than like two or three. Are we on yet? Okay. <coughs> Alright, well, I guess since uh, we had some space to kill here, I'll give some of my predictions, although they're not really much of predictions, because uh, I have no idea exactly what's going to happen here. Because, basically, I've actually been following these two guys for a long time. Um, I've been following Quanro for over two years now. Ever since we saw that game of him versus Midas. Uh, and if you don't remember that game, it was... Um, I don't remember what map it was, but it was a couple years ago, like I said. And Quanro played against Midas. It was a uh, ZVT. And he just destroyed Midas. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. He went in. It was just. I mean, it was like. It was the game. It was like the first game I watched from Quanro, maybe the second, and you could already tell how much of 
how much aggression he was going to have, like how much spunk he had as a player, because he was just like, all in aggression. I mean, he would, I think it was even like a you already saw how much how much aggression. The point is that he was just going crazy with mulisks and, and running in zerglings at the same time. And I mean, you'll just have to go and watch that game if you haven't seen it, because it was ridiculous. And that was kind of like the birth of Quanro. And me and uh, uh, Diggity even showed me that game. He's like, you dude, you gotta watch this game. And um, ever since then, we've both been Quanro fans. And it sucked because he seemed like he was like this up and coming Zerg, and he was about to, he was, had this massive aggression. He was about to come out and start poning uh, Terran players with this um, crazy aggressive style of his. And his ability to multitask as well, which is something I noticed, because he was able to do mutas and then run in zerglings and then run out mutas and run in zerglings and, and go with two different armies at the same time. And um, <clears throat> so it was really, really fun to watch. But then he did a little bit okay as he like came onto the scene, but then he kind of fell off into mostly obscurity and didn't really do very much. He got into some, I think, the round of 16 before. Um, but he just really didn't live up to my, my hopes for him, and uh, it was really disappointing. So this season, he's been playing some really good players and doing really, really well. And I think part of it is because he didn't used to have a verse Protoss game. And so, uh, you know, this season he's kind of gotten his Protoss game together a little bit. And uh, so, yeah, it's been, it's been fun to watch him actually, like, succeeding. And to see him in the finals is just really, really satisfying. And... Um, Calm on the other hand, again, um, uh, he's also someone that I've uh, kind of been watching for a while, not with the same vigor, but I've been a fan of Cal for a long time, and uh, so I've kind of been, uh, by proxy, a fan of STX. Um, uh, so yeah, I've kind of been keeping an eye on him just as basically like someone who was also on STX who who could back up Cal and, and July Zerg later on in, in games uh, to, you know, kind of get STX to win. And so I've been kind of keeping on him, and he's kind of the same way, where he really looked like he was an up-and-coming player, and he was kind of starting to bust out of his shell, and he was doing okay in Pro League. He didn't really do much in the Star Leagues, but he was doing good in Pro League, and then he just fell off the map. He started sucking, and then STX didn't even play him. For most of this pro league season until the last couple of like um you know there's five rounds in pro league and he kind of about halfway through and actually might be starting game one here in oh, just yeah, a second so it's thinking purposes five four three two one zero and the game is going to get underway so point being though just to wrap up my thought is that Calm has also come out of his shell recently so that's why it's so hard to predict this because these guys have really don't have a history a long history of playing, uh, you know, incredibly well. They've both kind of come out of their shells recently, and uh, we're seeing almost brand new players um, coming out and playing recently, so it's really hard to see how that's going to go, but, um, you know, Calm beating Jadong in effort, I'm just going to give him a little bit of an advantage, personally, just because it's so hard to do that, but then, you know, he went and failed against Luxury, and we've got Quanra owning Zero, who's not bad at ZVZ, um, lately, so, um, although he then lost to Jadon, so it, it, there's so many factors that would lead you to think one way or another, but it's just, uh, it's hard to tell which way it's going to go, um, I'm going to pass it off now as this game gets underway, but first I did want to give a shout out to, um, Kentor, who's been, uh, doing the streaming here, he's, he, we're, we're using his stream to stream from, so mad props to him for basically, uh, making us able to do this, and we are seeing a 5 pull from Quandro, it looks like, Wow! So, <laughs> this is going to be exciting right off the bat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we do have, uh, again, Quan responding in the top left corner and Calm in the bottom right corner. Um, I'll give my predictions at the beginning of the next game, but uh, it looks like there's going to be... Um, I was going to say that Quan definitely has the advantage in aggression. Um, everybody knows Quan to be aggressive. Um, you can't deny it. Just every single game and uh yeah and here we see it with a freaking five pool on carthage which is definitely a map favored towards um utilisks in my opinion but here we have calm going for a 12 hatch and in my opinion this game is pretty much over oh, already yeah the gg zvz you pretty much look at it as that like, is so disappointing map, this is like <laughs> yeah, this is like papers versus this is paper versus Chuck Norris right now. This is just oh, not looking good. It's a five pool with sunken uh, rush too. Yeah, it's so dirty. 
Um, Zergun's already on the way, and this is this game's already over. I mean, I knew this was going to be a quick night, but come on. This is my first time talking. This is ridiculous. It's going to be over so damn quick. Uh, hey, Deja Vu, uh, what do you think about this game so yeah, what's far? what's your prediction for the game? So, I think uh, coming to the game about two minutes in, my guess is that Quandro takes it. This is my completely prescient prediction ability that Quandro's going to take this. I mean, who can predict the game two minutes in, right? So that's completely unheard of here. <laughs> so, um, <yeah. laughs> this is just absolutely ridiculous. I cannot, I cannot believe that we're seeing a five pool in a ZVZ. I haven't, I watched so much ZVZ. I'm sure, actually, we've all watched so many ZVZs over the past couple months, and I don't think I've seen any uh, day five pools. And there we go. The two offensive sunken colonies already going down. Calm trying to throw down an like, offensive sunken of his own, but all those zerglings are in there, and and Calm's trying to defend that sunken colony, but he's going to be out numbered in sunken colonies, and here the drones are coming up the line, trying to attack those sunks, and this is just looking so terrible, no mining at all for Calm, Quanro's still mining at least a little bit, gonna be able to reinforce with more Zerglings and more Zerglings, Calm's just absolutely uh, drawing dead here, he's got uh, a few eggs coming in with uh, with Zerglings, and here they come, they're coming out right now, and this is his chance right now, if he can take care of those two sunks, maybe we can see him work his way back into this, uh, this is gonna be no so way. close whether or not he's able to take down those sunks, he got one, he, has, he might be able to get the second sunk, and the second sunk, But he did cancel that 12 hatch, remember, so uh, he isn't going to be that as far ahead as, uh, as he, as he would have had if he kept that up. Obviously, he couldn't maintain it. But he fended this off. He's got more drones, so maybe, just maybe, he might be able to come away with this. But uh, we do see Quanro has about 7 or 8 drones left as well. And um, this is actually going to be really, really close. This is almost like a game reset here. Both of them have about the same amount. Uh, Qualm might actually have 1 or 2 drones less, but this is extremely, extremely close. And I have no idea where these two players are going to go from here. Uh, I've never seen this before. Uh, Molchap, what do you think here? This is crazy. I think basically, Quanar should have won the game just there, I think. But what he did is, he sent his first six Zerlings and, and did something very crazy as a follow-up to a five pool. He droned up. He sent his two drones and his six Zerlings and he droned up after that. He didn't rally. I was, I was expect, I kept expecting extra Zerlings to come in to reinforce, but he was not building Zerlings. He was building drones the whole time. So at the end of it all, when we saw um, Calm bring his drones back to the line. Calm had like seven drones, and they switched back to Quanro's base, and he had like nine. So um, yeah, it basically was a reset. But in the end, Quanro actually coming out a little bit ahead. Uh, Calm was going to send four Zerglings out just to kind of prod Quanro and see what he can do. But uh, Quanro has six now to to defend, and because he was just droning up and getting his um his economy up, he's now got a second base Calm as well, where Calm had to cancel his yeah, that was what I was going to say, is Calm has his lair going though, so Quanro's, I think, Quanro's basically going to have to go Spore um, eventually, I mean not at the moment, he's going to, he's got a little bit of time but he's going to have to get Spores if he's going to win this game in the long run, because he can't quite and oh, Calm breaking through some Zerglings if he can get some, some drone kills that would be crucial in getting him back into this game uh, but it doesn't look like he's going to uh, Quanro is uh, microing his Zerglings very well, he's going to chase those Zerglings around, and he's got extra Zerglings in the mineral line to defend as well, so um, I think we're going to see a long game, actually, rather than a short game, is what it looks like, because we're going to have to, Quanro's going to have to bunker and go um, spores, and uh, it's going to be up to Calm to break him early or um, lose late. Yeah, this is absolutely sick. Um, I was actually going to say, during that rush, when those two uh, creep colonies were going down, I was going to say, I, if Calm fends this off, I am going to mail him 1,337 American dollars to Korea because he would just be so damn epic. Um, and the fact that he's doing it right now kind of makes me regret even thinking that because this is absolutely epic. He's actually got Zergling speed up on his Zerglings also. He's using that gas advantage that he got early on and I don't think Quanro is going to have um, Zergling speed up for a little while now and he's definitely not going to have a Spire up the way that uh, Calm is getting one up right now. Um, however, this is kind of like the, the same build that we've been seeing in a lot of ZVZs is that you, you have one player going for an early hatchery l getting a lot of Zerglings and then he go eventually goes into Spore Colonies and a drone going down here to two Zerglings some epic micro there coming out of Calm and I really have to hand it to Calm. I mean, he's just slaughtering right now. I mean, he's doing so well for the amount, like the amount of harassment he's been under from that five hatch. Um, a lot of lings though up for uh, Calm right now. Uh, we did see that there were a lot of eggs morphing, and uh, 
he does have a sunken colony also in his mineral line. So it's going to be up to uh, Quanro, I think, at this point. Yeah, there goes the evolution chamber. So we are going to see some uh, some spore colonies going up. And like I said, this is what we've been seeing a, a lot lately. And holy crap, a conga line of Zerglings just blocking off that choke entirely. And here comes the Zerglings now. And it looks like it's going to be a little bit of a battle here. And we're going to have to see if Quanro can break. It does not look like he's going to break at all. So uh, Calm holds, and he's definitely got a huge advantage right now, especially on tech. Quanro has two actuaries, but he does not have the option to go for any additional drones at this point. One Mutalisk is in the air now, and there's a sunken colony picking away at those Zerglings. Um, not a single drone going down there, just Zerglings being lost for Calm. So definitely Calm is way in the lead here. Oh, but he's going to lose two overlords, not just one, but two overlords to those spore colonies, and that is horrible. This one may be able to get away. Um, actually, I think the other one got away too. So, uh, wow, using those uh, those uh, mutalists to take some of that spore fire, pretty epic, actually, I have to say. But those mutalists are going to be in range of uh, a couple of those gas drones and some of those uh, mining drones, those mineral mining drones. So, this is not a good position to be in for Quanro. Um, as far as the evolution chamber with the spore colonies versus the early mutalists build go, um, I definitely always have to hand it to the person who gets the mutalists out earlier. As we can see here on the mini map, Calm is also going for an additional hatch. So, uh, yeah, Calm is in a, an extremely good position to take this game. He's got Mutalisks in the air. He's harassing. And uh, it's, I think it's just a matter of time before uh, Quanro realizes how desperate of a situation he is. He has a lot of uh, drones mining at this point in time, but um, just map control and air dominance just completely goes to Qu Calm right now. Yeah, and I think we're seeing Calm really play extremely, extremely smart here. He threw down that sunken, lo sunken colony before Quanro even started moving across the map. He knew that that, that was exactly what Quanro was going to have to do in order to try and stay in this game, is try and do some damage with Zerglings. And the, uh, we do see a hatchery going up for Calm being taken down by uh, Quanro. We'll see whether or not uh, Calm's able to save it, or if uh, Quanro focus fires it. It does look like Calm's going to be able to save it. But that was just absolutely brilliant. He ha he was so prepared for exactly what was going to going going to happen there. Even though it was such an odd beginning of the game, he was able to transition and completely predict Quanro's next move. You now we saw him pick off a couple of overlords. He's got Quanro completely on the back foot. He's got map control. It looks like now he's streaming up with uh, Zerglings, and he's still uh, he still has some offensive Mulus. He's got some defensive Mulus. Got a good mix there. He hasn't clumped all of his Mulus together like uh, players usually do. And I think that was the the right move here in terms of uh, splitting them up. And now the Zerglings are coming in, and with a couple of Mulus there to help, they're actually going to be able to take down the Zerglings. And now there's Zerglings inside uh, Quanro's base again here. Uh, Quanro just pumping as many links as he can, trying to trap these Zerglings. And it looks like he's going to be able to. Uh, the only two Zerglings left for Calm, so Calm's not going to be able to do too much there. But this entire time while this is going on, Calm is building up Mutalus numbers. He's getting more gas, using more, getting more and more air power. And there's just nothing is going to be able to do soon enough. He hasn't even produced a single Mutalus yet. He's completely dependent upon these... Uh, these Zerglings right now in these Spore Colonies, and that is just not the way to win in a, win a ZVZ, especially not once the uh, Mutalist numbers start going up. And uh, I think uh, Quanro is going to be able to survive for a little bit longer, maybe make one last push here with his uh, his Zerglings, but it's not going to last much at all. And we do see Calm getting into the drone line again with some uh, Zerglings taking off several drones there. And this is just about over for Quanro. It's just a matter of the Mutalist numbers getting to the point that Quanro can't resist anymore. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the case. I think there is still a chance, though, that Quanro can fight his way back into this because um, just noticing that Calm only had like five drones on minerals or something like that, so his economy is in pretty poor shape. I don't know if, if he's going to keep producing minerals. He's probably not going to be able to produce drones to even use that second hatchery. Um, he's just using it for production at the moment, and he's having to put out a lot of Zerglings to, to try and match uh, Quanro as well, who's now getting down a spire. Um, so it, it, he could theoretically fight his way back into the game. It's not likely, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. Um, I have seen, I mean, we have seen a lot more of these, you know, refugee zergs where they go for the spore colonies and what have you. Um, and it's, it seems to work more times than it doesn't um, if you have your spore colonies placed correctly, which um, Conro did not at first and still does not at his expansion. Yeah, we're going to see uh, Calm is just going to be able to pick off that gas mine and, and Conro's not going to be able to do anything with that just because of the poor... Um, spore placement there. Um, he's going to have to get a sunken down in his front as well, just to defend here. Um, but I don't know. It's Quanro and Quanro sneaking a few links in here. If he can pick off one of um, Calm's last drones, oh! But Quanro losing a few drones in his expansion as well, and so basically Calm has just taken away whatever economic advantage that that Quanro had. So yeah, I do think that um, Calm does have this in the bag in the long run. Pick off an Overlord just to make it hurt that much worse. 
Um, I mean, a significant amount of, uh, of Mutalisks. Yeah, so he's basically just has to, he's doing kind of the classic move, parking his Mutalisks in between the bases and then um, sending in Zerglings as well, trying to pick off Zerglings in the middle. But Quanro being relentless with the Zergling attack here. Going in here, he's going to try and power down the hatchery. The hatchery down to less than 300 hit points, 270 hit points on that hatchery. Um, if he sent in another six Zerglings with that, I think he could have taken out that hatchery. But, um, oh no, but now there's Zerglings. He's killing the spores in his main, so uh, if it wasn't sealed before, it's definitely sealed now. Yeah, there's pretty much no chance to get back into this game for uh, Quanro right now. He does have Mutalisks coming out, but uh, <clears throat> all his tech is exposed, and those Mutalisks need to stay together. They need to stay around the spores. They can't really defend the spawning pool or the uh, evolution chamber, um, for that matter. But, um, yeah, it, it just looks like it's pretty much over. Uh, Quanro is sending in his, I think, three Mutalisks that he has now off of two hatcheries. He's got about three Mutalisks heading over to Calm's base. One Mutalisk getting picked off there and this is just completely desperate. I think by the time, yeah, by the time those Mutalisks get there and start harassing those drones, there's going to be more Mutalisks in the air. However, it does look like, no, no, Calm was pulling his Mutalisks back there for a second there, but uh, he, he knows that with, just with his production units, he can defend this. Um, I think what the Observer was showing us there also for the longest time was that at Quanro's expansion, there was no extra spore colony there defending the uh, the gas miners. And yeah, there co goes GG from Quanro. So it looks like Com's going to take an early lead. And uh, off of that opening, I did not see that coming. I mean, I owe this guy 1,337 American dollars. Um, that was completely epic. I didn't see it coming. And, uh, like, I'm actually just completely baffled right now. I mean, sure, we got into the late game commentary, but let's think back here for a second um, of what he came back from. Two sunken colonies, six Zerglings, versus one sunken colony and about two Zerglings, and just epic, disgusting, Chuck Norris, godly drone micro. Like, I don't even know how that happened. Um, like, I'm just completely baffled by that, to be completely honest. I, I don't even know what to say right now. Yeah, that was really, really impressive early on. Using those drones to protect that sunken colony really early on. He didn't really... I think he only lost one or two drones to those initial six uh, Zerglings before the sunken colonies came up. So as that battle was proceeding, he was doing a good job of protecting his drones. And, he, and I think when it, even when it was over, after the sunken colonies, they of course focused fire on the on, um, calm sunken colony as well. He was still left over with about seven or eight drones, which um, really was more than than I expected him to, to survive with, um, considering six Zerglings and two offensive sunken colonies. He really should if he survived, which he shouldn't have at all, he shouldn't have been left with more than just a, a handful of, uh, of drones. But because of just that sheer number that he had, he really was able to uh, stay in the game. And since he had that gas up, that was so critical, the fact that he got that gas up and was able to tech so much faster than Quanra that uh, Quanra just could not deal with the fact that he got speed, that Kong got speed out first, he got Spire out first, he got Lair, he got, he had everything going for him as soon as that, as soon as that, uh, he broke those two sunken colonies. Yeah, well, you, you did kind of predict that Quanra was going to win, but, you know, you said that only two minutes into the game, so, you know, we, we got to forgive you for that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think the key to that, key to fighting that off was Quanro, for whatever reason, he, well I know what the reason is, but I think the crucial point was that he planted those, those two colonies down, and then he sent his Zerglings in to try and kill drones, and that was the moment that he lost, uh, lost that battle basically, I mean, I didn't think so at the time, but it ended up being because then he didn't have his Zerglings at the at his colonies to defend them, and the drones were able to surround and do a lot of damage to um, the the first colony. And so, if he had his zerglings back to defend uh, his colony, then the drones wouldn't have been able to get near them uh, as easily, and there, would, there wouldn't have been as many drones there, you know, by the time it popped, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think he would have been able to defend that sun colony. It's usually what you see zerg players do when they put down an offensive sunken is they'll keep their zerglings next to it. Um, to try and uh, try and guard it. And we're going to see a replay here of those drones coming in in just a moment. But um, I think that's kind of where he went wrong. Uh, and I, I was really surprised that he droned up as well and didn't just go all in because, uh, I mean, I guess he didn't know at the time that Calm had gone 12 hatches, so he was expecting, you know, more of a battle and having to catch up economically to uh, something else, I guess. Um, but, yeah, Quanro being such an aggressive player, I really am shocked that he didn't... Uh, he didn't uh, go for a more aggressive move, and here, here we're going to see him, yeah, see, he runs his Zerglings down, 
to the right. He actually stops one colony from going up, but then Calm just runs his stuff all the way up the top and immediately puts all of his drones attacking that colony, and his zerglings are hatching that as well. And, uh, yeah, so he just... Well, I guess he chased them off, didn't he? So maybe I'm wrong about that. But, um, anyway, just a lot of drones do a lot of damage, I guess. Yeah, um, actually, what I, what I noticed when we were actually watching the f game the first time around is if you look at that first sunken colony, it actually had a lot of damage done to it before it even popped up. And I don't even know what went wrong there. I know I was just watching it right now, but I wasn't tracking the Zerglings for Quanro. But something happened where all his Zerglings just disappeared. And actually, to be honest with you, I think Quanro just figured once he walked past that 12 hatch and he was going in with a frickin' 5 pool, I mean a 9 pool is supposed to counter a 12 hatch, but a 5 pool is supposed to, I don't even know what you would call that, like just uber counter a 12 hatch, and I think he just figured, well, I got two sunken colonies going down, a whole bunch of zerglings, and he has absolutely nothing, he's got two hatcheries, and that's it. Um, I, so, to be honest, if I was Quanro, I would have just completely dropped my APM, I would have let go of the mouse and I'd been like, ah, free win, because that's pretty much what it was. I mean, you were saying he didn't micro something properly, or, or whatever it may be, and that may very well have been the case, but at the same time, you got to realize, I mean, that's, that's just a winning strategy, I mean, that's, uh, like, I, I don't know what you would call that, it's just a win strategy versus a, a 12 patch, I would say, but yeah, I mean, when it does come down to it, you do have to micro. I mean, you, you are playing at the pro level, so I guess if he did make a mistake, then it was, I think, losing those Zerglings, like you were saying. Um, I'm not sure how it happened, but those drones just did some epic mic going around. And Go ahead. Sorry, just real quick. I, I, think he, I think what Calm did is move them towards the minerals for a moment, and then A moved them. So it threw off the Zergling AI and made them, like, squirm around but not attack while the drones picked off, like, a few of them, and then it was, like, nine drones versus two or three Zerglings. I think that's what Happen, yeah, that's, that's usually what happens, but I, I don't even know. I didn't see it. Like, I, I saw six Zerglings, then I took a look at the sunken colonies, and I looked back, and there's just no more Zerglings left. So, uh, I mean, Calm did a fantastic job fending that off, and then coming back, which was just completely unexpected. I mean, completely epic, but uh, I think we are going into the next match uh, right now, and this map is going to be... Um, outsider, so this should be interesting also. I do like this map pool, I do have to point out. I didn't really get to do any of the opening here, but I do like this map pool. It makes for some really interesting ZVZ. Um, a lot of these maps I, I really don't see as being ZVZ maps, which makes it, I think, fantastic to watch because I don't think there's any solid strategy necessarily for either of these maps. Yeah, Savior and, Car uh, Savior and Effort both looked uh, very despondent there, seeing their buddy Quanro lose, and uh, yet yeah, representing the the CJ Zerg there. It is some. It is the power of uh, CJ really. Is their their Zerg those three. It is quite impressive three of them. But Palm uh, really, I just think he played absolutely fantastically, and I, I really liked how he split up his Mutalist so well there. You know. He sent a couple at the main to take advantage that the gas wasn't uh, being protected adequ adequately. He sent one or two to the natural to to make to take care of the fact that that wasn't protected adequately. He sent one or two to, to overlords that were in the middle. He was, he, I think, at one point he was actually attacking two overlords out in the out in the middle of the field and at the same time attacking both mineral lines at the same time. And uh, that that's just absolutely ridiculous that everything was positioned so perfectly for him and that he had that completely set up and just absolutely just just destroyed Quanner. There was just nothing. Quanner could do in that in that moment. He was losing drones at two mineral lines. He's losing overlords, and he was just in uh, so much trouble. So I really liked uh, I really liked Calm's play. That was really impressive. You know, maybe I should just stick to my guns. And uh, I thought Calm was gonna win three one to begin with. That shouldn't listen to uh, to Quanro two minutes in going five full. Should not predict him winning ever. Considering uh, I should if I just stuck to myself, I would have been correct with Calm. Well, you did say three one, right? So. Uh, Maybe that was going to be fun. Well, yeah. well, yeah. I'll come back. Anyway, <coughs> um, yeah, very shocking though. I'm, I'm again pretty surprised that Corner didn't follow up with more Zerglings because I think that would have clinched it for him too. If he had, you know, eight or ten Zerg, well, if he did like ten Zerglings there instead of six um, against those nine drones, that would have been uh, that would have made things a lot different. But um, I don't know. That what's over is over. Uh, we've seen Quanro come back from uh, being down before. Obviously, uh, his epic comeback against Iris is all still fresh in our minds. Um, but 
Game's over. Calm is up 1 0. And I was, uh, I really didn't really want Connor to win, but, uh, you know, if you twisted my arm, and, and even though I think it's a close matchup, if you twisted my arm, I was, uh, you know, I, really, I was gonna say, uh, I did say that I thought Calm was gonna win, so I mean, here he is with an early advantage, so, um, Connor's got some catching up to do. But, um, next map is Outsider, and that should be an interesting map. Um, it's one of these maps where you can actually, if you want to, you can, like someone was saying beforehand, I mean, who, you can actually 12 hatch um, in your main. If you, you, you can basically only get a mineral only. You can squeeze a drone through and get a gas expansion, but it's risky because then you can't you can't defend it uh, as easily because it's so far away when the air fight starts. But um, you could theoretically 12 hatch and get an extra base and then defend your ramp. Uh, I've seen that done before in ZVZ, I think, but uh, it is pretty risky. I don't know, but uh, this is always produces, this map always produces fun games, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I actually, I've never s even thought of that strategy on this map, be just because I always think of that, that uh, base behind your, uh, within your base as a as a mineral only but yeah I guess if you do squeeze a drone through however the amount of time even that it takes to squeeze that drone through is just in a ZVZ it's just it's got to be so detrimental but at the same time you don't have to worry about a zergling harass and I think that if you're mining that gas that quickly that second gas so quickly that um, by the time the air battle happens I think you should be ahead by that point so um, hopefully we do see that and uh, looking at the map pool again I think if any of these uh, I know this is kind of being extremely optimistic, but if any of the maps were to produce one of those, you know, epic, um, you know, past seven minute ZVZs, um, I definitely think that this would be the the map to do it on because um, it does have potential for, uh, like you were saying, like going for a 12 hatch or, um, or, you know, just doing, getting an extra base pre pretty much. And um, maybe, I don't know, and if it does produce some epic, you know, past seven minute game, we might even see somebody take, ooh, one of those double gases, and uh, we'll have to see what they do with that, maybe some Defiler play or something like that, I don't know, I'm being extremely optimistic, I'm sorry, we've just seen so many ZVZs lately, I just want to see something completely unexpected, um, kind of like that last game, actually, that, that kind of did it for me, but uh, I want to see something even better than that happen, so... Um, I don't know, and I am looking forward again to uh, some Muta on Muta Micro. Um, I'm just watching some of this uh, this game going on right here, and I, I do look forward to the Muta on Muta. Um, the, the Zergling on Zergling is just, it's, it's too overdone, it's, you see it all.